name is Mathieu Desnoyers. Uh, I work at Efficius and uh, this afternoon I want to talk with you. So I had a different topic in mind uh, and I ended up changing completely my presentation topic to discuss hazard pointers with reference counter. So uh, the short story is I've been CC'd on, uh, some, uh, pa uh, on a patch set from Bokken Feng two weeks ago uh, which was proposing uh, hazard pointers to the kernel, uh, adding those. Um, and then I sat in a presentation he gave at LPC last week, uh, and that kind of brought me, well, thinking about new ideas that I will present today. And I do have a prototype implementation of those ideas in user space. It works, it gives good results, and now it's a matter of porting that to the kernel, which would be straightforward, one-to-one -one mapping in terms of APIs. But let's begin. So the outline of this presentation. So we'll start, we will start slowly uh, discussing existence guarantees, mutual ex exclusion. Then we will speed up a little bit, discussing RCU, hazard pointers, and reference counting. After that, we will still uh, stay in that area uh, discussing uh, the trade-off of the various existence guarantees mechanisms. Then, going further, I will discuss how it's possible to combine existence uh, guarantee mechanisms together to benefit from, I would say, the benefits of each of those mechanisms. Um, and I will present what I've been working on uh, lately, uh, hazard pointers with reference counter, HP ref, present some benchmarks, uh, discuss future work. So, a few words about existence guarantees. So, there are various mechanisms that provide existence guarantees. What do I mean by existence guarantees is when you hold a pointer, you are guaranteed that accessing the object uh, will not cause, well, any seg segmentation fault. You are certain that the memory there exists. So one way to do it is to have immutable data. So it's, it's there for the entire lifetime of your system. Mutual exclusion is another way to temporarily provide an existence guarantee. Um, but that comes with overhead, of course. A read copy update is one way to provide existence guarantee. Hazard pointers is another mechanism for that, and reference counters as well. Okay, a few words about mutual exclusion or locking. So there are a few mechanisms. It's not by no, it's by no means a complete list here. So we can talk about spin locks, mutexes, reader writer locks, or even sequence lock, which is kind of a weird type of locking where the readers retry if the uh, object is con concurrently modified. Okay, so a bit of background about RCU. So RCU, because what you'll see in my talk, I'm kind of mixing pieces of RCU with hazard pointers and ref count. So bear with me. So RCU has both a publication and grace period guarantee. The publication guarantee uh, uh, makes sure that the object gets the, the stores to the object are observed before the pointer to that object can be observed by readers. The grace period guarantee is about reclaim. So basically, it's done by making sure that all readers are observed to go through a quiescent state before, uh, after, between unpublishing the pointer and reclaiming the object. And so, uh, and it's basically done by. Uh, waiting for the end of all pre-existing read-side read critical sections before allowing reclaim. So, yeah. Okay, a few words about hazard pointers. So, the publication of hazard pointers is very similar to RCU. Nothing special, well, different, much different there. But the difference sits in tracking usage of specific pointers uh, by the readers through hazard pointer slots. So, it's a... Uh, so it's more targeted to the pointers being used rather than tracking read-side critical sections. So far, so good. A high-level view of how hazard pointer do the reclaim. So uh, let's say we have so uh, we store a pointer to null to nullify the uh, the pointer to the object. Then we have a memory barrier. Then we check every hazard pointer slot for object. Uh, for the address of the object we are going to reclaim with a load acquire. And uh, as long as we observe that pointer within the hazard pointer slots, then we, 
we stop progress, right? We wait until we observe that this uh, hazard pointer slot do not contain the address we're going to free. And then we reclaim the object memory. On the reader side, so the reader dereferences the pointer loading the address to the object. It stores the address to a hazard pointer slot. Then it issues a memory barrier, and then it dereference again that same pointer to the object and validate that the address was not changed. If it was changed, then it needs to retry, for instance. Uh, and then if it did not change, that's fine. It can use the object, and this object is guaranteed to be stable. And then when it's done, it can clear the hazard pointer slot with a store release. OK, that's good. Uh, and by the way, you will notice between slide 7 and 8, so we have on the uh, reclaim part. So basically, we're storing a pointer to null, barrier, and then loading from the hazard pointer slots. So store to A, load to, from B. And then on the other end, on the readers, we basically have a store to the uh, hazard pointer slot, so that's store to B, and then the reference pointer after the barrier load from A. A. So this is really a Decker um, type of uh, uh, memory barrier guarantee uh, that we that we get, and we benefit from the properties of it. So the core of the guarantees provided by hazard pointer is really this Decker. Okay. Now let's talk about reference counters. Okay. So that. That's simple enough. It counts the, num num the number of re references to an object. So it's typically initialized to one when you create the object. As you get additional references, it can increment. And it, when it decrements back to zero, a release callback is invoked to reclaim memory. So there are many, many trade-offs. Uh, I will discuss the trade-offs that come with each of those mechanisms. So for RCU, the RCU readers are very fast, they scale well. However, long read side critical sections can postpone reclaim uh, for a long time, uh, which leads to high memory footprint, or higher footprint than other mechanisms. Uh, and the read side critical sections naturally, naturally prevent reclaim of all linked list nodes across an entire reader traversal. So let's say you have a RCU reader, it goes through the list, and let's say you're removing multiple elements from that list. So that reader, before being able to reclaim the memory of the elements that were removed, it needs to wait for a grace period. So it, it basically will not be able to reclaim the node's memory for every node that are being removed until that entire traversal is done. So, and this is a very important difference. You'll see that hazard pointer do not have that same kind of, I would say, um, protection for the entire traversal. Uh, hazard pointer, as we will see, really protects node per node what is being accessed, which is quite different. OK, hazard pointers. They are also very fast. The, re uh, the readers are really fast. They scale well. The reclaim of memory can be done immediately after the reader stops using the hazard pointer address. So this is a major difference between RCU and hazard pointer. RCU, you can be delayed if you have a long read side critical section, whereas for hazard pointer, you can immediate, immediately reclaim the memory uh, of the uh, hazard pointers that are not being used anymore as soon as they are done being used. So um, it is a very good fit when the readers, they reference what we could call immortal pointers, where the existence of the pointer, so where the pointer sits, uh, is, is guaranteed to, to exist. So still about hazard pointers. So the immediate reclaim of the successor elements, let's think about a linked list, for instance, uh, can cause issues for data structure traversals where the elements can be concurrently removed and reclaimed. So there are some workaround strategies. For instance, in the paper from Mage Michael from 2004, he pointed at basically putting a null pointer in the uh, node next value when it's being removed to, no, sorry, on the prior node, no on the node next value to prevent it from to prevent any readers uh, that would be stuck on that removed node to try to progress forward and potentially 
uh, find a, a next node that would also have been removed and reclaimed because remember, hazard pointer only protect the node that is protected by the hazard pointer, not the other nodes that follow. Unlike our RCU where you're postponing reclaim until the end of the entire traversal. Big difference. Uh, also, other ideas uh, by convention, we could prevent reclaim by putting a, uh, a kind of a hazard pointer on the hazard on the list head. But then the, the downside is uh, it could, uh, if you have large list, then that could uh, lead to similar issue with uh, as RCU, where you have unbounded memory use, uh, and it's also not a good fit if your elements are uh, chained within multiple data structures. So. There are some ways, but uh, it's a tricky problem. Reference counting, the trade-offs. Well, if you have a ref count that's heavily used for short uh, uh, periods of time, uh, incrementing and decrementing that uh, ref count from various CPUs is going to cause a lot of cache line traffic. So the performance will, will really uh, be not so great. Um, it is memory efficient because the, re the reclaim happens immediately when the ref count reaches zero. Um, and uh, the other thing is, okay, let's say I have a pointer that would point to an object. So I cannot fetch that, uh, the reference that pointer to that object and hope that ref count kind of makes it stable or uh, guarantees existence because the ref count field is in the object. So you, you basically have to have another strategy on top of ref count to make sure you can access the object before then, uh, before you can take the ref count. Once the ref count is incremented, that's fine. So uh, I've used in the past RCU to do uh, provide that kind of guarantee or some use locking. So, but you need another strategy on top of ref count if your goal is really to dereference a pointer and be sure that you can actually use the object immediately. So the ideas I got uh, last week uh, when listening uh, to uh, Bokun's talk is, well, so based on, on my experience with RCU, uh, what I did in the past is to combine RCU with ref count, where you basically, you iterate, let's say on a linked list, you find a node you want, then you increment its ref count, and then as long as you hold that ref count, it exists. You can end your read side critical section and you don't need RCU anymore to protect it or to, to guarantee its existence. So it works well with RCU. Well, why not with hazard pointers? So we could use hazard pointers to basically go grab, a, well, the object and have a guarantee of its existence and then increment a ref count in it. So that chains nicely. The only thing you need to do then on the update side is to make sure that you do both uh, the hazard pointer uh, uh, synchronization and the ref count dec uh, decrement. Uh, so which is what I did. So I, I did a prototype in user space uh, based on the user space or CU library and libarsec for allocation of per CPU data uh, of hazard pointers with reference count counter, which I call HP ref. So it uses hazard pointer as reader fastpath. It falls back to ref count when there are no slots available. Uh, and basically, because of that, I can bound the amount of memory needed by this entire mechanism to eight slots per CPU, a single cache line per CPU, and I don't need to have any dynamic allocation of slots. I don't need to have any arbitrary ordering slots by address. Uh, so unlike other implementations uh, that I've seen so far, so this implementation is really simple. It's about 200 lines of code, and it's... Uh, uh, really compact, really fast. Uh, and the, th the trick is the readers, they can also decide to promote their hazard pointer to ref count if they intend to keep the reference for a long time. So the idea is we should not run out of, ref, uh, of hazard pointer slots if the, if the uh, users of this API uh, be behave nicely. And if they don't, well, we get to, I think, no, we get to basically uh, when uh, the last slot is taken, the last slot, I use it as an emergency slot, and it's only used by the API to, to grab a hazard pointer reference to the object and transform to ref count. So it's always free and available. 
Um, so, the main APIs, yes. So, the synchronization, so waiting for hazard pointer values to be unused. So, uh, I did two, there are two ways. So, one is to wait for a specific hazard pointer value, if you just want to reclaim one value. But then you have the use case where you want to do batch reclaim. You would like to have a worker thread a little bit like the call RCU uh, mechanism for RCU. So, what I did, I created a, a HP ref synchronize that synchronize against all pri previously held hazard pointers. How it does it? Uh, the idea is we want to wait for all prior hazard pointer readers, uh, oh, no, sorry, slots, to pass through a quiescent state where they are, are null. Remember, we have a fixed number of slots in the entire system, eight slots times number of CPU. So as soon as we have observed that they've passed through a quiescent state where they were null, when we were in the synchronized, that means uh, we have basically, we can guarantee that no previously held hazard pointers are still present after the grace period. So if you think that it looks like RCU a little bit, yes, uh, I used similar uh, concepts to implement the user space version of uh, RCU in my library. Uh, so what I do, okay, so there's actually two ways uh, the, the scan will discover that a given slot is quiescent. I, either it's null, or it observes a transition, so it, that it goes from a prior pointer value to a different one. And the only way this transition can be observed by the grace period, uh, or by, by the scanner, is that it has gone through null in between. So it means it has reached null and quiescent state in between. So that works. The only thing is, we have no, if we just do that, we have no hard guarantee about forward progress of the synchronize, because we could have, theoretically speaking, a steady stream of readers that always put the same value within the same slot for reading the sa exact same data. So I, how I work around this, I've added the concept of a current period or phase. So it's a, a two-phase algorithm where basically when I want to synchronize, so I wait for the other phase parity and the readers, they load that current phase, va phase value and they use their, the lowest bit of the address, which is available for tagging, and they, uh, they, they put the current phase in it. So what we can do like uh, in this way is to make sure that the synchronize is never blocked on the newly coming readers that are in the phase they are not waiting against. And then we do the two phase and we're good. So that guarantees forward progress. And that's a trick we've used in the user space or CU implementation as well. Okay, some benchmarks. Uh, so it's the order of, of magnitude that matters. I'm sorry I didn't have time to make those benchmarks more readable. But we can see here, this is the QSBR, uh, uh, URCU. It's not unlike the uh, scheduler-based classic RCU in the kernel. So we can see here, let's, uh, let's look at the top number, so 40 times many, many, many. Uh, that's the number of reads that were done in 10 seconds. Uh, that's a short critical section that basically they, re they reference a pointer and do check the content where, uh, that it's the right value. So on the updater side, I uh, swap the current, the, the published value. So I allocate new memory. I use a, an exchange to swap the pointer, and I uh, reclaim the old memory, putting zeros in there. So, uh, but it's mainly the read that I'm interested in. So QSBR, there's no code really uh, on the as the read lock and unlock. So it's extremely fast. So we add that. Uh, the US RCU and URCU BP, so they really have RCU lock and unlock, um, similar to what we have in the Linux kernel, and they use uh, the mem barrier system call paired with compiler barriers on the read side to basically eliminate the uh, barrier instructions from the read side fastpath. So we, ca we can see that they are a factor, well, 50% of the speed of QSBR. Then if we go up, uh, that's hazard pointer. 
So I, I did implement the hazard pointer with ref count with the uh, mem barrier paired with compiler barrier scheme. And actually, I'm not that far from the number of URCU in terms of read side speed, uh, so, uh, which is pretty nice, maybe 25% slower. Uh, then if we just for if we add the barrier in here, we can see that we're about a factor eight slower than uh, so I mean most of the cost comes from having that barrier in there. So if we pour, port that to kernel space, we might want to consider having a hybrid solution where we it, when we can, we use IPIs to basically remove the barrier from the read side fast path. Uh, paired with an API coming from uh, the, uh, the the scan uh, for uh, synchronizing against uh, hazard pointers, then we can compare with uh, per thread locking. With uh, that's your CUMB, so that's the same as this one, but it has a memory barrier uh, on the um, uh, read lock and unlock. That's mutex, so those are much slower and reader writer lock. So it's not a big machine, so that was actually taken mostly on the plane on my laptop, but yeah, you get the idea. On larger machines, that's going to bring even better uh, improvements. Okay, so future work. Um, porting my user space prototype to the Linux kernel would be one next logical step. Uh, there's really a one-to-one -one mapping of the user space APIs uh, that I have to the Linux kernel API, so that should be straightforward. Uh, we, we even have the luxury to disable preemption in the kernel, so in the user space I actually have to use restartable sequences to compare and set uh, the um, the slots. So uh, I compare, make sure, so if the slot content is null, then I know I can set my hazard pointer into it as a reader. So I use RSEC, uh, RSEC fastpath uh, in the, on the reader, on per CPU data. Um, so we could apply it to speed up heavy users of reference counts. I uh, discussed with uh, Greg uh, this morning and he saw maybe use cases uh, for removing uh, actually locking that sometimes is used in driver code to provide existence warranty of object before uh, the reference count can uh, reference count can be taken so that could replace this uh, these locks uh, directly um, other nice things we could do but uh, that would add some complexity so I'm keeping that for later first of all so rather than requiring the read side user to promote its hazard pointer to ref count explicitly, one thing that could be done is to let the scheduler do it when it preempts a reader in the kernel. So it, it's not really straightforward to do in user, user space, but in the kernel, that's something we could think about. Also, another scheme that I have in mind, but that would add even more complexity, would be that uh, rather than waiting for the hazard pointers to uh, become uh, cleared, so let's say, so I have a scan, I'm waiting for the hazard pointers to not be present in the slots, uh, and currently I wait for them to stop being there, so rather than doing that, if I could go and poke the reader state and change its hazard pointer ownership into ref count, and have the proper synchronization so that when the reader exists, uh, exits, uh, it, it can then uh, put the ref count, then I would provide uh, very hard forward progress warranties uh, for the synchronized uh, hazard pointer. So, but that, that's tricky. Uh, and also figuring out uh, if and how hazard pointer reference can be applied to the traversal of data structures that are modified concurrently, for instance, well, kind of creating a hazard pointer friendly linked list. Actually, so I'm sorry about the drawing. So I, I, I drew that yesterday in my bed on a hotel a piece of paper that's like that big. Uh, so you can see here, that's a linked list. A, B, and C. So, and I might be completely wrong, and I will have to. I have implemented that today, and I have to test it now. Uh, I can figure what I'm missing because uh, I figure other people would have thought about it before. The basic idea is this: so we have two linked lists. 
One is a linked list for readers, and one is the linked list for writers. So we, do, we basically chain each node twice. So what we can do is we have a removal operation, uh, which I call in my code so far, hide from readers. So that guy is basically, let's say we remove B. So we hide B from readers. So what we do is we make sure A and C, they point to each other and not to B anymore. But we keep the reader pointers from B here, that point uh, to, so if a reader sits on B when it's removed, it still has the pointer to C. So the problem is, if C gets, on, uh, gets hidden from readers, then we have an issue because we don't want C to be um, uh, reclaimed, right? So the idea is, if C gets hidden from reader, what we need to do is we have to look at every node, and we still have links to B, right? With the writer list, that's where we can walk backwards and figure out, figure out all the nodes for which we need to update the reader list next pointer to make sure it does not point to a node that is being hidden from readers. Then we can guarantee that all the next pointers are pointing to valid live nodes that are obser observable from readers. Okay. So, once we have stored over all that, what we can do is do the synchronization of hazard pointers before actually removing B and C from the writer list and freeing. So, that, that can be done in the same step, I'm pretty sure. So, that, so, by having those two linked lists, I'm pretty sure we should be able to um, support uh, linked list reversals, Protected by hazard pointers. Uh, yep, uh, that's that's it. So, but I mean, I might be completely wrong. Please let me know if you figure out if, uh, an issue with that uh, with that scheme. So, uh, some references. Uh, so, the uh, all that work is really based on prior work from Mage Michael on hazard pointers from 2004. And uh, there, that's a link to the latest version of my prototype that I posted to LKML. Questions, comments? Oh, yeah, there's one question over there. So if you like the scheduler to do the hazard pointer to reference count conversion, then you could have a case where the reference count would create a overhead because you have done the conversion. Yes. By the so True. it might not help in those cases. or Which is why I would very much prefer having the other scheme that I pointed to uh, which is when a specific hazard pointer is preventing forward progress, then the, the scan or the synchronized part would be responsible for uh, tr uh, translating it into a ref count. That I, because the adding complexity and code that would end up touching a reference counter to the scheduler might not work or right. might have some significant over it. Yes, I'm concerned about that uh, yeah. as well. Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Well, thank you very much.